Find out what is happening at the library from virtual programming to fun new services. Hear recommendations on books, movies, TV shows, and so much more. This is In the Stacks at Mustang Library. Hi everyone, this is Pam from Scottsdale Public Library and today we're going to show you how to do a quick book folding project. We're going to be making this cute little hedgehog here. So the materials you'll need for this project are an old book, a glue gun, you can use either a hot glue gun or just regular glue. You will need some embellishments for your hedgehog and we have googly eyes, we have sticker eyes, you can use felt or construction paper. I have some little pom-poms here for the nose and also a bottle cap from an old water bottle. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your old book and go ahead and tear the cover off of it and the back cover as well. So you have this and you need approximately about 150 pages in your book. If you have more than that, you can just discard the rest and cut out from the spine. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the first page and you're gonna fold it into the spine lengthwise. And you're gonna do this for every page in the book. Okay, so once you're done with the first fold, it's gonna look something like this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start with the other folds. And the first fold is gonna be a triangular fold and you're gonna go all the way down, fold it all the way down until you meet the spine, like that. And the third fold is another triangle, but it's only gonna go about halfway to the spine, so like that. So you're going to go ahead and do this for every single page in the book, just like that. Okay, so once you're done, it's going to look like this. This is the front and this is the rear. And we've gone ahead and we've hot glued a pom-pom on the front for his nose. We've put some googly eyes on him, and we've also put some feet on the bottom. And if you don't have a pom-pom, you can use a cotton ball or a button, or just cut out a piece of paper and color it in. And for the feet, the same thing. You can just use regular old paper. For his hat, we actually took a piece of construction paper and cut it in a circle, and then took the top of a bottle of water and colored it in black. And we're just gonna go ahead and put some hot glue on this and put it on his head. Okay, so there's his hat, and we are all finished. Each year, the American Library Association honors books, videos, and other outstanding materials for children and teens. Recognized worldwide for the high quality they represent, the ALA Youth Media Awards, including the prestigious Newberry, Caldecott, Prince, and Coretta Scott King Book Awards guide parents, educators, and librarians and others in selecting the best materials for youth. Selected by committees composed of librarians and other literature media experts, the awards encourage original and creative work in the field of children's and young adult literature and media. The 2021 Youth Media Award announcements took place on Monday, January 25th, 2021 at 8 a.m. Central Time, this midwinter meeting. A recording of this event is available right here. Let's take a look at this year's winner for the Newberry Medal. Our first award that we're going to take a look at is the John Newberry Medal. 
this distinguished award for children's literature is celebrating its 100th year. This year's winner for the Newbery Medal for 2021 is When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller, published by Random House, a division of Penguin Random House. When Lily and her family move in with her sick grandmother, a magical tiger straight out of her Korean folk tales arrives, prompting Lily to unravel a secret family history. Long, long ago, her grandmother stole something from the tigers, and now the tigers want it back. And when one of those tigers offers Lily a deal, return what her grandmother stole in exchange for her grandmother's health, Lily is tempted to accept. But deals with tigers are never what they seem. With the help of her sister and her new friend, Ricky, Lily must find her voice and the courage to face her tiger. Our next award is the Randolph Caldecott Medal. This award is the most distinguished American picture book for children that focuses on illustration or art. We Are Water Protectors, illustrated by Michaela Goad, is this year's 2021 Caldecott Medal winner. The book was written by Carol Lindstrom and published by Roaring Brook Press, a division of Haltsbrinick Publishing Holdings. Inspired by the many indigenous-led movements across North America, We Are Water Protectors issues an urgent rallying cry to safeguard the Earth's water from harm and corruption, a bold and lyrical picture book. When a black snake threatens to destroy the Earth and poison her people's water, one young water protector takes a stand to defend Earth's most sacred resource. Water is the first medicine. It affects and connects us all. Our next award is the Michael L. Prince Award, which is a medal for the most distinguished literature for young adults. This year's winner goes to Daniel Nayari for Everything Sad is Untrue, A True Story. This book is published by Arthur A. Levine, an imprint of Levine Pierdo. The story of a boy who flees Iran as a small child, detours through a refugee camp in Italy, then winds up in middle school in Oklahoma, where he is met with both curiosity and suspicion. Our next award we're gonna take a look at is the Coretta Scott King Book Awards. Recognized for outstanding African-American author and illustrators, these books are written for children and young adults. The first award we're going to take a look at is the Coretta Scott King Outstanding Book Award for Best Author. This year, the award goes to Before the Ever After, written by Jacqueline Woodson. This book is published by Nancy Paulson Books, which is an imprint of Penguin Random House. Jacqueline Woodson's novel, In Verse, explores how a family moves forward when their glory days have passed and the cost of professional sports it plays on black bodies. The next award we're going to talk about is the Coretta Scott King Book Award for Best Illustrator. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul, illustrated by Frank Morrison, is the Coretta Scott King Illustrator book winner. The book is written by Carol Boston Weatherford and published by Anthem Books for Children, Young Readers, an imprint of Simon Schuster Children's Publishing Division. Aretha Franklin was born to sing. The daughter of a pastor and gospel singer, her musical talent was clear from her earliest days in her father's Detroit church, where her soaring voice spanned more than three octaves. Her string of hit songs earned her the title, The Queen of Soul, multiple Grammy Awards, and a place in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But Aretha didn't just raise her voice in song. 
she also spoke out against injustice and fought for civil rights. Hello, my name is Jenny. I am a library assistant here at Mustang Library, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the Youth Media Awards. The first award I'm gonna highlight is the Schneider Family Book Award, which is an award for books that embody an artistic expression of the disability experience. I Talk Like a River, written by Jordan Scott, illustrated by Sydney Smith, and published by Neil Porter Books, Holiday House, wins the award for young children. What if words got stuck in the back of your mouth whenever you tried to speak? What if they never came out the way you wanted them to? Sometimes it takes a change of perspective to get the words flowing. Show Me a Sign, written by Anne Claire Lazat and published by Scholastic Press, an imprint of Scholastic Inc., is the winner for middle grades. This piercing exploration of ableism and racism answers the call to dig deep, examine core beliefs, and question what is considered normal. Perfect for summer reading, distance learning, and schools, deaf author and librarian Anne Claire Lazat weaves a riveting own voices story inspired by the true history of a thriving deaf community on Martha's Vineyard in the early 19th century. School Library Journal gave it a starred review and said it was expertly crafted and exceptionally written. This is My Brain and Love, written by I. W. Gregorio and published by Little Brown and Company, a division of Hatchet Book Group, is the winner for teens. Definitely navigating issues of race and mental health, as well as giving voice to the reality of American teens born to immigrant families, many of whom grapple with different cultural and familial expectations, Gregorio has written a heartwarming foodie rom-com. The next award I'm gonna talk about is the Alex Awards, which honors 10 best adult books that appeal to teen audiences. Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse, published by Saga Press, Gallery Books, an imprint of Simon & Schuster. The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune, published by Tor Books, an imprint of Tom Doherty Associates, a division of Macmillan. The Impossible First, from Fire to Ice, Crossing Antarctica Alone by Colin O'Brady, published by Scribner, an imprint of Simon & Schuster. Kent State, Four Dead in Ohio by Durf Beckdurf, published by Abrams Comic Carts. The Kids Are Gonna Ask by Gretchen Anthony, published by Park Row Books, an imprint of Harlequin, a division of HarperCollins Publishers. The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones, published by Saga Press, Gallery Books, an imprint of Simon & Schuster. Plain Bad Heroines by Emily N. Danforth, published by William Morrow, an imprint of HarperCollins. Riot Baby by Tochi Onibuchi, published by Tor.com, an imprint of Tom Doherty Associates, a division of Macmillan. Solutions and Other Problems by Ali Broche, published by Gallery Books, an imprint of Simon & Schuster. And finally, Rewrite Upon Sticks, a novel by Quan Berry, published by Pantheon Books, a division of Penguin Random House. The next award is the Stonewall Book Award, and this year marks the 50th anniversary of this award. Stonewall Book Award is given annually to English language children's and young adult books of exceptional merit relating to the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender experience. This year's winner is We Are Little Feminists, Families, a board book written by Arco Chavista, designed by Lindsay Blakely and published by Little Feminist. Beautiful photos of real life families showcase all the wonderful forms of family, while poetic text builds both vocabulary and family connection. We Are Little Feminist Families helps families and educators discuss sexuality and celebrate all genders. The last award I'm gonna talk about is the Asian Pacific American Award for Literature. This award promotes Asian Pacific American culture and heritage and is awarded based on literary and artistic merit. The picture book winner is Paper Sun, The Inspiring Story of Tyrus Wong, Immigrant and Artist, written by Julie Long, illustrated by Chris Sasaki, and published by Swartz and Wade, an imprint of Random House Children's Books, a division of Penguin Random House. An inspiring picture book biography of animator Tyrus Wong, the Chinese American immigrant responsible for bringing Disney's Bambi to life. School Library Journal says, it's a well-told story that spotlights the too often unrecognized talent and contributions of America's immigrants. The children's literature winner is, When You Trap a Tiger, 
written by Tay Keller and published by Random House Children's Books, a division of Penguin Random House. Kirkus Reviews gave it a starred review saying it's a compassionate glimpse of mental illness accessible to a broad audience. The youth literature winner is This Light Between Us, written by Andrew Fukuda and published by Tortin. A powerfully affecting story of World War II and the unlikeliest of pen pals, a Japanese American boy and a French Jewish girl as they fight to maintain hope in a time of war. We were only able to go over just a few of the award winners that were announced. And just as a reminder, to see the full list of winners and honorees, visit ala.unikron.com. And be sure to tune in for the next episode of End the Stocks, where we will discuss even more award winners, as the 2021 Andrew Carnegie Medals for Excellence will be announced on February 4th, 2021. We'll see you then. And that's a wrap on this week's edition of In the Stacks. Tune in next Tuesday at 1 p.m. for Get Lit at Civic Center Library. We'll be back again in two weeks to talk about books and more at Mustang Library. Thanks for watching.